Hey. What's up? Y'all know how we do it. Happy Thursday. Yes, you made it. You made it. You yes. Made it. So they, today is good. Today is good. It is. We're going to be doing... I was waiting for you to say it. See, he missed oh. his cue. He missed his cue. Oh, we're, we're going to be... We're going to be talking about know your why. Know your why. Know your why. It's very important that you know your why. So, we're going to pray, do a quick review, and we're going to get on in there. We're going to get on in there. Thank, thank you for coming. Go ahead, like, share. Yes. Do it for the algorithm. Do it for the kingdom. Um, so, God, Lord, I thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for everything that you are, everything that you have allowed us to see. Thank you, Lord, for your revelation, for your revealing, because there's nothing new on the earth. But thank you, Lord, for revealing it to us so that we will know. I pray, Lord, God, that this word... Um, it is planted in the hearts of your people, God. And I pray that it is there for good, that it grows and it multiplies 30, 60, 100 fold. And I pray, Lord, that the, that garden be tender uh, and, 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 um, and fertile and fruitful for your word. And may it be a, a inhospitable environment for anything that is not planted by you, God. I pray that, I pray, Lord, that they not only receive for them, but they receive for those that are around them and those for generations to come. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Woo. So Amen. last week we did a, like a part two of swords. We talked about what it, we talked about your response. Um we came from Second Kings chapter four. Um I think pretty much the whole the whole chapter, but it was verse uh chapter four, verses eight through thirty-seven. Mm -hmm. And it was about a woman and it was about a gift that uh, the man of God at that time was the prophet of God, one of the most um, uh, one of the most talked about prophets of that time. Mm -hmm. And he bestowed to her a gift from God. Uh, but when it was dying and how she, when it was dying, how she responded to that, um, she encountered different people like close uh, close people that you would normally tell your woes to. Um, she responded a certain way to them. Uh, she responded to um, what would you call uh, customer service people. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you want to know about that, you need to go back and watch it. But then she responded to the source different from all those other people mm -hmm. because she received the gift from the man of God. And the man of God in that story represents uh, the Lord himself. So she went back to the source. Uh, we talked about going back to the manufacturer. Right. Sometimes things are created made and they're not made at the store or by the store that you buy it at they're the reseller so if you have an issue usually in the box in the packaging somewhere in the instructions it'll say do not return to the store but return back to the manufacturer that's it that's uh, it. because they're the ones that know the product they create the product they're the ones to actually do the customer service on the product mm -hmm. so again we talked about your responses who do you take your issues with who you take that up with you take that up with god Sometimes it ain't it ain't for your issues not for everybody. Everybody can't handle it. Everybody can't come on help you. Can't make it better. Uh, you complain up. You know you you take your issue to to the utmost level, uh, and and you you don't stop along the way. Right. So that was yes that was last week. We also talked about um, um, it's not necessarily about what you know or what you think. It's about uh, what he said. By having faith and believing and uh, actually and, and going by that. Because sometimes we don't understand what he's trying to have us do. But if, if he said it, if the Lord said it, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. And uh, again, we can go back on that because it was real thick. We went through Second Kings. We went through Proverbs. Uh, we went through, I want to say, Matthew at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was pretty, it was pretty intense. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with today, though. Start with today right. on knowing your why. Knowing, knowing your why. Uh, we go basically refer to the whole book of Nehemiah. <laughs> <laughs> basically, so, just, so just flip it, over to Nehemiah. Yeah, the whole, Nehemiah, the whole book of Nehemiah. You know, like I said, we're gonna talk about your why. And mm -hmm. you might say, okay, okay, preacher, what you mean by your what you mean by your why? Well, it's it's very it's very important that we know why God created us. It's very important that we know why that he put us on this earth. What what was the purpose of him uh, him giving us this ability to giving us this this faith, this measure of faith and giving us all this stuff? 
Why? What was the purpose of God giving us that? And we have to know and understand our why. And so we're going to talk about that today. And Nehemiah is going to help us. He's going to help us out with that. And he's he, he going to help us out about how to stay focused and don't let nobody deter from you. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that today. So you want to... Um, um, so a little okay. bit... Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Go ahead. Okay. So I was like, I miss my cue. I don't know if it's a thing. Is that a thing right now? All right. So we're going to start out in chapter one of Nehemiah, right? Mm-hmm. So chapter one, if you've never heard of, uh, of Nehemiah, or maybe you have heard of Nehemiah, He's most remembered for rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they had been laid siege to. God had allowed them to be captured by their enemies. And those that who, who escaped the capture and, and being drugged to the foreign land, those who escaped were still living in the land. Mm -hmm. But there was an issue. Um, the actual city, the walls, and at that time, the walls were the security of the city. The walls were burned down. They were crumbled. They were down. And then the gates were burned, um, like everything, the temple, everything was like, that was the, the what made Jerusalem, Jerusalem right. was not it. Okay. It was mm -hmm. not, it was, it was bad. So, um, there was, there were some people who came back to, to, uh, the land they were captured in from the land that they were captured from. And Nehemiah inquired from them, like, hey, what's going on back, you know, at home or whatever? And he got a bad report. He said, the people are, you know, well, let me go back. Let me actually, uh, let me read it. Some of the people are uh, in great distress. This in verse three. And they reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. <laughs> and the gates are burned with fire. Good one. We call it. We call it. Um, this is what happens when you're popular. This is what happens. Okay. So it was when he heard these words, this is Nehemiah, that he sat down and wept and mourned many days. Uh, and he was fasted and praying before God uh, in heaven. So this happened in the month. Uh, we know it is around November, December area. And he received this report. And he was praying to God uh, about this situation about what was happening and what happened to his people because he was part of the captured crew okay he was he was actually the cupbearer for the king mm -hmm. okay cupbearer was a glorified you know food poison tester person so they would take the cup and they would drink before the king would drink it mm -hmm. if they die get choked get sick they know something is wrong and you know the king is gonna be next or to keep it you know from him or whatever Mm -hmm. So that was his job. Okay, not a super, not, not the best job ever, um, but he was close to the king. Mm -hmm. So in his in his mourning and weeping, he prays, and part of his prayer, um, like the most, his prayer goes through from verse five through verse eleven. It's pretty lengthy, mm -hmm. but the first part of it is is talking to God and repenting for himself, for his people, for his family. And he's talking about we have sinned. We have broken the covenant. And you said, you know, if we were this, then this would happen. And that's what happened. And he was like, I repent. We have done bad things. And then he gets to verse 8. And he says, remember, I pray, uh, the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying. And this is, the, this is the clincher. This is where we get our why from. You said, if you are unfaithful, talking about the people of Israel. He's like, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. And if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you are cast out to the farthest parts of heaven, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Okay? And he goes through and he's praying, he's praying, and he gets to what he wants. He gets to what he wants. He says, your servant prospers uh, he said, let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant me mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer, okay? Mm -hmm. He wanted to prosper as of this day, and he, that he would be granted mercy by the king, mm -hmm. okay? Why? His why is back in verses 8 and 9, because we were unfaithful, we were cast out. 
But he said, if we return to you, he's, he's repeating what God's covenant was. If we return to you, keeping your commandments and doing them, right. that you would bring us back. You will restore us. Right. So his why was the restoration of the people of God. Right. That was his why. If you know in Nehemiah at all, his why was not to build a wall. He ended up doing that. He ended up rebuilding the wall, reposting the gates of the city. That was great. But that's not where he stopped. He kept going because he wanted to restore the people. How he was going to restore the people? He wanted to turn their hearts back to God so they can do the commandments and uh, and, and do what he said. Right. At one point, they didn't even know what he said. If you continue on, I think I want to say it's chapter 8. The, the law of Ezra is read to the people. Mm -hmm. The law written down. Mm -hmm. The word, the book of Ezra is read to the people. Mm -hmm. Telling them what to do. We're not to do that like, oh, we need to do this. Okay. Uh, and and Nehemiah not only is given, because remember chapter 1 says he wanted to prosper and he wanted to uh, have mercy in the sight of the king. Mm -hmm. He was also given, he was given more than that. Chapter 2, the, the different distance between chapter 1 and chapter 2 is about four months. Right. It's about four months space. Because uh, he's talking, He this initial report comes Somewhere between November, December, and it takes until about March, April for him to get to the point where he actually receives the prosperity and the, and the uh, mercy. But not only does he receive that, he receives favor and grace. In chapter one, he's a cupbearer. By the time we get to 13, he's the governor of all Israel. All Jerusalem. He is the governor. Okay, that means he is, he is uh, other than the king. He is the highest authority in the land. He can issue taxes. Uh, he has that authority. And he uses that authority to put to get uh, his people, to get God's people back on track. Not only um, does he, he, he try to get the, he builds the wall. Um, there are threats from the inside from his own people. There are threats on the outside from mm -hmm. other people. Some of them even come in the name of the king. And he was like, no, I'm here in the name of the king. Uh, there are some people uh, that are paid and uh, to to mislead him. There are people uh, that have said they're good, that are normally quote unquote good people. They come and they try to distract him or lead him away. Uh, he even has to cast out um, different practices that develop when he like he has to leave and come back. He has mm -hmm. to cast out different practices. By the time you get to the end of the book, and that's chapter thirteen. Verse 30, I'm going to read it. This is what he's saying. Because he writes this book, or this book is written like it's written to God. Like if he had to write a report to God, this is the report that he wrote. Um, chapter, I mean, the last chapter, chapter 13, verse 30 and 31 say. It says, thus, and this is Nehemiah talking. Thus, I cleaned them of every pagan, of everything pagan. I cleansed them of everything pagan. I also assigned duties to the priests and to the Levites each to his service and to bring the wood offering and the first fruit appointed times. Remember me, O oh God, for good. All of his actions were focused back on chapter one, verses eight through nine. We have been unfaithful. You cast us out. I want you to bring us back. We're going to be faithful. Continue to redeem us, God. Redeem us. Put us back. We sorry, we doing better. His job was to make sure everything was in line. That's what he was called to do. He wanted the prophet. He wanted the priest. He wanted the Levite. He had a he had a heart for his people, a heart for his God, and the Lord used him and blessed him to be able to move in that capacity. So, but but the, one of the things that kept him was the why the whole time. Right. Tag, you in? Right. right. And it's some of the things we're going to look at, and she went over it, but we're going to dive into it a little mm -hmm. bit more about uh, knowing your why. And one of them is we cannot, one, one thing I want to talk about, do not let anyone stop you from fulfilling your why. You cannot let nobody stop you fulfilling your why or your purpose. Reason why is not only you have more than one person that's counting on you. Look at them people was counting on Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. God gave it to Nehemiah. God gave that to Nehemiah because he knew Nehemiah could handle the job, handle the situation. That's why he gave it to Nehemiah. 
Same thing for you. That, that, that why that God gave you, that purpose that God gave you, he told you in your prayer, he told you in your worship, wherever it is, he gave you to that because it was fit just for you. Mm -hmm. It was fitted and designed just for you. So God knows you can handle that. So don't let nobody deter you from what God told you in prayer. If God told you to go right, you go right. Don't go left. If he told you to do it this certain way, you do it the exact way God told you to do it. Mm -hmm. You can't let nobody. Nehemiah didn't allow nobody. They came up against him. They lied. They were. They was too. They came and lied to him, and told like she said, came in the name of the king, saying that you are pre doing this for you can be king. Mm -hmm. Told him all that. And some of them came uh, threatening him. Yeah, talking about he he can't. Uh, you can't do this because the king is going to be mad at you. Right. And basically, I'm just paraphrasing. Yeah. And not knowing that she, he already has favor with the king. And all the letters and the signatures yeah. to prove it. He, he has everything. He has everything he got going with the king. So in, from ver, uh, chapter 4 to ver, uh, chapter 5 and 6, he's going through this. The enemy is, is attacking him while he's fulfilling the purpose, while he's fulfilling the why. The enemy's attacking him. And he goes on, but he never lost his focus. Nehemiah never lost his focus on what God has called him to do, to fulfill. So I'm speaking to you too. Don't lose your focus. If you have to go write, write it on the uh, on the wall, if you got to write it on the sticky note or something, every time mm -hmm. you get up in the morning, remember the, remember the why. Why God called you. Why he told you to do what you do. Because you, you, you might not know it, but it could be a lot of people that's affected by you not fulfilling the why that God called you to do. Right. Yes. So you, you don't let anybody stop you fulfilling your why. These people couldn't even live together. They had mm -hmm. to live on their own farms. Uh, they had to live. Uh, they could not be in community because there was no place safe for them. Right. It, 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 it there got was to, nobody. There was nobody in the kingdom to stand up for him, them, nor, nor did they have a physical safe place where they could all be together. In chapter four, when when they start beginning to build the wall, they uh start beginning to build the wall. People start coming at attacking them. They was like, wait, but the enemy saw that they was being prosperous in what they was doing. He was. They was like, wait a minute, haters. Yeah, Basically. and you gonna have them. You gonna have people coming here. Hey man. Y'all really doing this? Now, we got to do something about this. We can't let this, we can't allow them to feel the purpose that God had on their life. They see order and they like chaos. That's it. Um, I was, y'all know I'm a teacher. Some of you may not know I'm a teacher. I used to teach younger kids. And I remember this like it was yesterday. I was sitting at my desk and everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. And I just sat there and I looked. You know, I have some, you know, yeah, some troublemakers, you know. I had set them close to the front, close to me. Uh, but not close, close to me, but they were sitting at the front. And I was looking, I was like, even they doing their work? Anymore? And I saw it. His head was down, and he was doing stuff, and he went, like, he was surprised, like, oh my gosh, the room is quiet, and I'm not doing it. He turns around to another one that I usually have an issue with. He said, hey, be bad with me. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Matter of chaos, what are you talking about? Like, he was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. No, mm -hmm. no. Like, you have people like that in real, that's a real thing. There's a real testimony. People are, people are like that. They'll see, they're, they're used to, you know, you know, some manner of something happening. And according to the report, the people were being reproached, which means they were being bullied. They were looked down upon. They were second-hand citizen. People were overcharging them because they could. Who was going to stand up for them? They ain't nobody. Right. They'll conquer people. Da, 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 da. And when they saw they was they was doing better, they're like, what? And some of the enemies didn't even, like when they first started building, they thought they weren't going to do nothing. They started laughing they at They started it. laughing. Ah, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. And then they got, about, they got the wall about, you know, waist high. They were like, oh, who, like, it was like a fox. It's like, man, anybody can knock your little wall over. You know, uh -huh. like a fox can knock it over. So, like, it was something, something ridiculous. And uh, when they saw they started making more progress, they started coming over there and meddling in their stuff. 
-hmm. sending letters, trying to get, you know, get other unfocused. people to gather together and be against them. And they're just haters. Right. So, yeah. And then Nehemiah came, uh, and they was trying to confuse the, they was trying to confuse the people. They were here uh, telling them all this, all kinds of stuff, just trying to confuse them. But Nehemiah, remember, he stayed focused and he knew his why. And that's another point. We go, Nehemiah, he knew and understood his why, his purpose. And, and we're going to get to that too. Because he went back and told the people, he said, he said y'all be silent. He talked to them. He said, y'all quit crying out, that, uh, doing all this stuff. And then he goes and tell them, this is what we're doing this for. Trying to get them back focused. Getting them back focused on the why. Getting them back focused on the purpose. That's what Nehemiah was trying to do. That's what he was trying to do. He said, we will restore this wall. We will get back into fellowship. We will get back into doing what we're supposed to do. He was so focused. He did not let nothing deter him from, from what he's supposed to be doing. He knew his why. He understood it and he knew it. So if anybody came against him, he already, no. Because even when they came with the lies and stuff like that, nearby said, no. Nah, they that, came with a whole, and, and just in the modern day translation, at first they came real aggressive. It was mm -hmm. like, like when you think bully, that's what you think, you know, oh, and they, they came out like that. Then they started coming sneaky, like a whole different energy, and mm -hmm. they would come up there and they was saying crazy stuff. Like, um, they would send them like, hey, come down here and do blah, 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 mm -hmm. just, to, just to get him off, like, just either to get him off, sometimes they would call him or do whatever, trying to uh, set him up to be killed uh, or, or whatever, to the point where uh, Nehemiah told his people that they need to have their building equipment in one hand right. and their swords in the other hand. Right. One, one man watch, you know, watch the, the people that's, you know, mm -hmm. hating on us, and the other ones build. And then you watch. And then they build. Like they went on shit. And they still got the, the wall done yeah. in record time. Right. But it didn't stop at the wall. Because again, his why wasn't the wall. Wow. Right. Right. His why was to restore the people to God. Right. And you can find that in uh, Nehemiah chapter 6. Where she just got through talking about. You can talk about that. How. The conspiracies. Yeah. How they came against him. And they would start lying to him and stuff. And Nehemiah. One of the things, and this is another thing in your why, you must have discernment. You must have discernment in your why because... You, you should you, you should, should be able to tell the difference between the mm -hmm. good and evil. Did God really say that? Did God really send you? Because God can talk to other people. Right. But you got to be able to tell the difference. And sometimes raggedy people... You do. Raggedy people. Right. Raggedy, and sometimes it be good people doing raggedy stuff. Right. And you got to be able to know if it's God or not. Because uh, here in... Because uh, sometimes it sounds good. It's just not God. Right. Ne right. Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 12. Here it is where he says, he says, then I perceive, there it is, that's discernment. Here I perceive that God has not sinned him at all, but this is pronounced of his prophecy against 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 me because and he talking about how they hired people just to come torture them or uh, to lie to them they hired people to do this he says verse verse 13 for this reason we, right. go ahead. for this reason he was hired wait let me go back yeah. he says uh, in verse, in verse 12 because that's in his, yeah it says but then he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Samuel had hired him for this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way in sin, so that they might have cause for evil for evil report, that mm -hmm. they might reproach me. So they tried to catch him up. They tried to catch, catch him slipping, basically. Mm -hmm. They tried to scare him. They tried to uh to make to make him look bad. They tried to, you know, basically discredit him and everything that he had done. And he was like I refuse to be afraid. I ain't coming down. I don't care. Whatever, whatever. We gonna do this. Um, right. Because he was standing on his why, what God had told him. Right. What God, is, what God has been doing. Because again, between chapter one and chapter two, it's about four months of prayer and fasting and prayer and fasting. So he is re he ready. Yeah. He's ready. Right. God right. done sent him. He done prospered him, like you said. 
He done gave him authority and mercy and, and favor and grace and finances. He done gave him every... He said, I ain't coming down off this, this wall. I'm not coming down there and doing that. I ain't coming out. It was like hide. I think one of them told him to go hide somewhere. Mm -hmm. He was like, what? I ain't going nowhere. Right. No. Right. So, so the question, the, well, one of the questions is, mm -hmm. what is, what is your why and what's stopping you from completing your why? Could it, could it be misinformation? Somebody that told you a lie? Could it be prejudice towards something? Or someone. Or someone. Could it be pride? What I mean, we, we got to ask ourselves, what is it? What's stopping us from feeling our why from focus on our why? Got to ask ourselves that because that can, uh, the enemy can send anger. He, he can send all this stuff. Notice in the scripture, he was sending all this stuff towards him. He was sending his, all this stuff towards Nehemiah, but Nehemiah did not break. Nehemiah stood strong in his why. He stood strong in his purpose and fulfilled it because he had got, he had talked it. And that's very important. When, when you first, God first give you your assignment, he first give you whatever God give you your why, go and pray first. Don't just go out there and start doing it. Go and pray fast. Make sure you understand what God was saying. That's what Nehemiah did. He just didn't go straight into it. And Nehemiah didn't have a leg to stand on anyway. Right. He was just a cupbearer. He was a right. poison food tester. Right. Basically. So, I mean, it's other examples in the Bible where uh, even Jonah, you know, Jonah knew his why, but he had some in front of it from stopping him at the beginning, but then God got him together. Mm -hmm. And then he picked up that, that thing that stopped him right after he did it. Right. But that's right. a whole different story. Right. So, I mean, just imagine, my God, just imagine if Jesus didn't fulfill his why, his purpose. I he mean, had raggedy people get in the way. He had all these people come up, just coming him left and right. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this certain way? You doing tradition of this? You doing this and doing you doing this on the Sabbath? Why did Jesus could have said, you know what? God forget it. All these, these people, people doing this, they, they bother me. But he did not do that. He stayed focused. He stayed there. It is. He stayed focused on what he was doing, and that's what we got to do. Look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Yes. That's who we got to look into. That's how we got to. Jesus is our great example. He fulfilled his assignment. He, he, he knew his why and his purpose. He did not allow nothing to deter him from that. Just imagine if he would have did. Well, we wouldn't even be on here. We wouldn't even be on here, but yes. he did. Mm -hmm. And he fulfilled his purpose. He fulfilled his destiny. He did it because how we know? Because when he told the father, he said, it is finished. That means he completed his assignment. He completed the why the why he was here. He completed that. He didn't allow nothing to, to, uh, to deter him. He didn't allow nobody to stop him, even though they lied on him, even though they, they, um, they came against him. They told stuff that he didn't even do. And they they uh they accused him of stuff that he didn't even do. And he still died for them. Same people that accused him, he still died for them. He died for them same people that he knew. He knew Judas, Judas was going to betray him, but he still died for Judas. He stayed focused. And we got to do that same thing. We got to stay focused. We got to we got to stay focused on what God has called us to do. We got to know our why and understand it. And we must have discernment. So when the enemy come against us, we know that it's the enemy. Are you for us or are you against us? We got to know that. We got to know our why. Don't let nobody de deter you from your why. Um, and on that note, um, Psalms 1, mm -hmm. verse 1, the first part of it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. A lot of times we say, you know, well, that is, they're a good person, but they always say, well, that's a good person, da-da-da. Uh, ungodly means not like God. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
So if God says go right, and that person, no matter how good their intentions are, say go left, that's ungodly. Our family, everybody else in my family goes left. You need to go left too. But God told you to go right. Right. It don't matter what they said because God said go right. Mm -hmm. It don't matter how they feel about it. I said, well, we're not going to invite you to the cookout no more because. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm gonna cook at, at the house. I right. guess. Right. You right. know, whatever. You know, I'll get my my cookout stuff from Brooks is already done. I guess. <laughs> you know, my little rotisserie and barbecue sauce. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it don't it don't matter. Right. It don't matter if God said it. That's what it is. That's and what a lot it of times is. Uh, we get distracted because of other people and people who we like, and people who we think are godly, and they might be godly on everything else. But this is counsel, and it is ungodly. If they are going against what God has specifically said, it is ungodly. It's ungodly. It's ungodly. Right. So, um, you have anything else? No, that's it. Just, just know. I mean, make sure we know our why. So when we go out there, when we out there in the world, the Bible says, be, be sure. in the world, but not other world. Be sure. Because the enemy might throw anything at you. And it might look good. It because, might sound good. Because the Bible says the enemy comes come, comes as an angel of light. Perceiving himself as an angel of light. So you got to be careful. Because he, he's deceitful too. He's going to and fro seeking who he may devour. So you got to know. And use your discernment. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 10 talks about that. The spirit is a gift. The gift of discernment. God has given us that. To know between the truth and the lies. Mm -hmm. To give us that. And so that's what you must you must understand and know your why. And don't allow anyone to stop you from feeling your why or your purpose. You got to know that. So I pray that this, we pray that this help you much as it helped us. Yep. And... Um, if anybody wants to be saved and come into the kingdom, this is a perfect time for you. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. Today. So if that's you, the Bible, uh, Bubba also says, um, whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, yeah, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth yeah. that, uh, that God raised you from, from the dead, dead. thou shalt shall be, be saved. That's and that's it. it. That's you it. don't have to jump on one foot. You don't have to give an exorbitant amount of money. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be on nobody's, you know, whatever. That's it. That's it. That is it. Um, and then we can figure everything else out after that. Yes. You yes. do not have to be perfect yes. to be saved. Man, you're right. You, you don't. You have to believe to be saved. Right. Come uh, as you are. And, and, and the Lord and you will take care of everything else after that. Right. You don't have... Come right now. It don't matter who you live with. It don't matter what you got at your car in your car, right. at your house, who doing what. Come you can you figure want. that out. We can figure that out later. Right. You don't need that's not a requirement to, to say yes to Jesus right now. So uh let us pray for you and bless you. And then that's it. So Lord God, thank you so much for everything that you have done for us. I pray that these words have not fallen on deaf ears or on uh, uh fellow ground, but I pray, Lord, that their hearts be softened and receive your word, God. I pray that this word blooms and I pray that it brings forth fruit, 30, 60, 100 fold. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you open their understanding and allow whatever is blinding them, whatever is blocking them from what you would want them to do, what you want them to see, what you would have them to be, God. I pray that you remove it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray this person um, is refilled, refreshed, and um, baptized in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you and keep, keep you. you. Is my prayer. prayer. Oh, yeah. May faith shine upon you. And establish, establish you and give you peace. In, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. Amen. See you next time. See ya.